Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to the next session of the live stream where we're creating a decentralized application on an election an an contract in Ethereum using Truffle. Um, so the very first thing we want to do is we want to add a, a, a mapping here to our Spark contract. We're going to be at the top. We're going to map uh, addresses to true or false uh, and save it as voters. We're, it's just a list of people that have previously voted. So here's our vote function. I'll explain this. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. I don't know, my test. I don't want to do it in my test. Do I not have the uh, election file open? There we go. So inside the vote function, first we're going to make sure that the person hasn't voted already. Then we're going to make sure that they're a valid candidate that's being voted for. Candidate uh, ID is less than or equal to candidate's count and greater than zero. So it's got to be one or two in our case. But we're going to record that the voter has sent it in that voters variable. And then we're going to update the vote count on that candidate by adding one to it. Trying to get my friend here, who you guys are familiar with, to bring us some food. I'm at a new location today. Um, and also, it takes a, a, a variable. It takes the uh, uint, which is just a, a, a number of the candidate ID that's being voted for, which we use later all through the code to see that if, if it's greater than zero and, and less than or equal to the, the, the candidate count. And then also to uh, use that ID for the candidates to upvote that uh, candidate. We're going to test this function in a, in a test inside of the election.js file. Let's see what this test does. It allows a voter to cast a vote. We're going to have an election instance. We're going to vote using candidate ID, the first candidate, which is Haley Quinn in that case, from the, the, the only account that we have inside of, uh, uh, inside of uh, GEF. And then it's going to return the, uh, the voter count for that uh, for that vote. And we're going to make sure that uh, it uh, was marked as voted. And then we're going to count the vote count for candidate 2, which is the, the, fir the, the second candidate. So the candidate ID is 1, and we're looking at the, uh, the second candidate. So candidate ID 0 would be the first candidate inside the candidate array. Um, and we're going to see if it increments the, the, the candidate's vote count. So to do that, we're going to close out of our web server and run truff test. We're also going to do a test to see if it throws an exception for valid candidates that are being tested for. So if we try to vote on candidate number 99, it's going to give us an error message. And both our candidates are not going to receive any votes. So after we run the first test that we coded, we'll run this second test as well. And what are we doing here according to our curriculum or our project outline? Oh, it didn't save when I changed uh, the last time. Session 2.5, recreating environment. Get two point where off. So we're casting votes. We're doing the code and the testing at once. And we're also probably going to do the client side voting at the same time. in this same session. It's going to take a lot longer for sessions to, to happen once we get Haley here asking us questions. Um, if you guys have any questions inside of the uh, chat, that'd be great. I can answer them. And then the test is just taking a little while to perform because it's got to deploy the, uh, the instances of the, uh, the contracts. Uh, 
I think so, I don't know. I'll find out here in a sec. Hello, live EDU moderator. It doesn't appear to want to do anything. Let's try restarting back here. Unlocking our account again. And then trying to run the test again. This is going to run both our tests that we just added, by the way, the invalid candidate vote, as well as the valid candidate vote. is doing something this time because it's updating here in the background. He's submitting a contract grade which is good stuff because we need that to do the test. We're submitting another contract, which is probably the one after the migration, which is our election contract. Trying to get burgers from McDonald's. McDoubles, 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 McDoubles. Submit a transaction. We're doing some testing. And eventually our test will update with the results of the test. We're hoping that everything passes anyway.
to tell you the truth, the testing would be a lot faster on that Ganon chain local blockchain. Ganon, whatever. So we may end up doing that here in a second because this is taking a significantly long time. But we need time to, to fill up the stream anyhow. So this is how to test on Rinkly. You just got to wait for the transactions and wait for the contract creation. We submitted another transaction. So I don't know how many we're looking to do. But our test updated is inside the election contract. It's doing tests as we speak. Aha! So it succeeded on allows the voter to cast a vote, but it failed on invalid candidates. It also failed on initialized candidates with the correct values. must contain revert. I'm not exactly sure what that means. So it did fail. We're just trying to see if the error message contains revert. Let's log that error message. Then my test again. So we actually want to run this on Kadacha instead of log get. This is going to be much, much faster this way on a private local testnet. We only want to use get when we want to interact using the, uh, the uh, decentralized application interface with MetaMask. Which for some reason does not connect to my Gnome chain on the local host. And now our port is wrong. So we'll just redo this uh, duplication file. So it does correctly fail with the correct error this time. But we still have an error on it initializes the candidates with the correct values. Either way, the two tests that we just added work. Let's go back to running without Ganache. Actually, we can run get Ganache and get at the same time. It's just another change in the port. do now is uh, run the centralized application because it appears that our vote count is not equal to zero when it should be zero. Let's see if that's the case when we look at our decentralized application. No, the vote is zero. 
By the way, we can continue. The two tests that we added work, uh, at least on Ganache, they work and give us the appropriate results. And we have another test here for it contains an exception for double voting, meaning that you cannot vote more than once using the same account. So let's see if that is the case when we add this test. So what it's doing is voting on candidate two from an account that I don't have. We'll change this to account zero. Maybe it does work on account one. That's why it failed on uh, Rigby's because we don't have an account one. We only have account zero. So we accept the first vote. And then we try to vote again and it fails. So let's see if that's the case. We want to get and go into our truffle button. Yes. Change all the values back. Use Gavanche and run a trough test. Or Gavanche or whatever it was pronounced, I don't know. I don't know about this was the reverse error message that we're supposed to see. So we vote on candidate two, and then we want to see if candidate two has one vote. Well, candidate one has zero votes. This test is written incorrectly. Let's see if that works. No, it should be equal to one actually. Because we voted on that in previous times. Let's try that again.
Thank you for extra code in there. Let's see if we can turn that out and see if we can get these to succeed. I'm going to not vote twice, even though it's the name of this, this uh, test. Because for some reason, I couldn't figure out how to get it to check that revert error. We see the revert error in, in progress right here. It's reverting. Let's see what it's actually getting to run a lot of cool cat. I put that in the wrong spot. I put it in the wrong spot, man. What is going on in the stream? Twenty seven people in here, I am ready. So I guess uh, our code tells us that we can't vote from uh, the, orig the original account. Let's try this again, see if this works. We just use the next account and the sequence of the actual browser crash. There we go. So what we really wanted to test was that uh, it throws an error for double voting. Let's try that again. We want to try voting again after the first vote and before returning candidate one. Should return, it should contain a revert error when we try to vote twice from the same account. Are we using one for shows? Yep. Yeah. Again, this wouldn't work on Rinkaby because we only have the one account set up in Rinkaby. We just have to add another account, which is really easy to do in MetaMask or Geth. But for now, we'll use Ganache or Ganache or whatever. I should really look up how to say that. Does anyone know how to say that? So it's got the revert error. Yeah, so the, the, the test that we're trying to configure, this one here, if there was an exception for double voting, is giving us the revert error that's over here. Um, so we successfully tested what we're trying to test. Let's see what's next. We're going to add some client side voting using a form in our index.html file. 
we're going to update our app.js file too. But let's take a look at index.html. We're just going to add a form. Where are we going to add this? Above the account address that we have for our trusty MetaMask that shows up in our decentralized app application, we'll add the form. So on submit, we're going to call a function, which we're going to add to our good old app.js file called app.castvote. We're going to select a candidate from our flow control. And then we're going to have a button that says vote. Um, and then inside of our app.js, we're going to throw in all this code here. I wonder if we throw it on the top here, like this. What's it doing? There's loader and content. It's going to load stuff. It's going to show your account. Actually, all of this stuff is already here, I think. Yeah. So I wonder what's new in the code that we're adding to render here. Probably this candidate option stuff. We're going to list each candidate in the drop down, I guess. Then we're going to have a cast vote function, which doesn't exist right now. Which means we'll take the value from the candidate select drop down. We'll make sure the uh, contract is deployed, and then we'll um, vote using the candidate ID from the account of that's being used on MetaMask, which means we will need a new MetaMask uh, account to do this with, because we can't use the one that created the contract. And then we'll hide the content and show the loader, and show the console login error if there's an error. So let's test this out. We're up to 27 minutes. So there's a couple of different things I need to do. First, I need to update Truffle to use MetaMask. Then I'm going to need a new MetaMask account to vote with. How do you create a new account? Create account. Then we'll go back to account one. Actually, first we'll select the address for account. Because in order to use the float function, we're going to have to use some ether to run the gas. So if I was just to put my recipient address in here and send it one ether using a bunch more wave than that. And now switch my account up to account two. If I go ahead and npm run dev, we can get our decentralized application up and running. Application. Actually, I think it's going to auto launch here in the window or tab. Yep, it did. Something's broken. Unexpected identifier is that a JavaScript? It's not good here. I think we need to call that our cast flow function.
So I think we actually need to go ahead and uh, and get library reset our contract first. Not NPM, sorry. Hey, Brent. Yeah. I think Haley's coming over with food. Yeah. She's going to McDonald's. So I didn't know what you wanted, so I just ordered McDonald's. And fries. What? It's too late now. She's already off Wi-Fi. Sorry. I'm pretty sure she's on the way over anyway. I'm working. I'm on live stream. Sorry, dude. They might know when they come to the door, though. so slow. The savings and stuff from migration to the network. Hello, Dimitri V. Welcome back. I'm glad to see you here. Go ahead and ask me any questions I'm going to have in the chat as I move along. And Dimitri V, if you want to give me a follow or a subscribe, that would be great. We have tons of one of these videos coming. We are live pretty much every day for the foreseeable future. I, I took the day off yesterday um, just because I wasn't feeling well at all. Uh, so I needed a day to sleep, um, which means the schedule has been pushed up for these projects. These projects are going to run until tomorrow, and then we'll have another set of projects running uh, as of. Uh, Friday, I guess, from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we were supposed to have a fourth project on the go at the same time as these three projects that we have now, um, but it kind of got lost in the shuffle. So we'll probably start that one um, and two or three others uh, on Friday. Don't you be, you've been in here so many times. It's nice to see you. Glad you're doing well. And if you want to chat, you can be anybody else. Go ahead and chat in. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's do our npm run dev to run our decentralized application. So now we can select the candidate to vote on using our JavaScript drop down menu. If we had more candidates here, we'd be able to vote on more. If I submit a vote using this uh, second MetaMask account, we should get a MetaMask notification asking us if we're sure and how much gas we want to pay on that. So again, we're going to pay lots more gas than that. Uh, and we'll submit this transaction. Hopefully, that's going to submit a vote and record it on the blockchain. Let's check out our history of transactions.
Transaction zero confirmed. We have one vote for the Jared Dunn uh, uh, candidate. And actually, our, our, our JavaScript is so smart that we're not even seeing the candidate's uh, drop down. I wonder where that is, that code. We're not even seeing it if there's already been a vote cast. So it's in here somewhere. Probably in our render function, where that is. Where is render? Here we go. Candidate select. By the way, if we take a look at this using a third which is all the vote again. Yeah, we can vote again. If we had any gas in this account, we don't currently have any gas. Um, that's basically that. What else do we have in our curriculum there? Watch events and then a conclusion. Wow. So what we just went over here, guys, is how to do the code and testing and the client side voting for uh, uh, casting votes inside of our voting decentralized application that we've been building. Um, I wonder, just out of curiosity, if we can go ahead and add a third candidate. Let's do the interview. So then we have to migrate again. Because we changed the smart contract. And it just takes a little while to migrate to the and push our contract live on that test. Yeah. Now again, we don't want to be doing this on the live net because we're going to spend dollars upon dollars in gas every time we go to publish our contracts and our changes to test our changes, which is why most people use the test net to test their uh, contracts.
And here we have a third candidate, named after my friend Dimitri. We can select him from the drop down menu. If we get any gas, we could go ahead and vote for him. We do have gas in the second account, but I'm pretty sure it won't let us vote again because you already voted once. Let's find out. Yep, that's... Oh, no, this is a brand new smart contract, actually. Uh, because we voted in the last one. We're going to vote again on this one. For Haley again. Vote for Haley. Uh, we're in the wrong account. We voted. We confirmed. So we load our web interface. Here we have one vote for Haley. We cannot vote again. Um, just like you asked. I'm just going to try to give up some time here while I wait for these burgers to show up. I have about 80 minutes left in the line to play around with in this particular uh, session. So I wonder if I uh, recreate a candidate with the same name. There's no, there's no, there's no code to protect against this. Um, so I'm pretty sure if I have two candidates with the same name, it would confuse some or introduce some confusion in the smart contract. Because if you have two candidates with the exact same name, how do you know which one you're looking for? It would be like having three parties, Trump, Hillary, and Trump. While we're waiting for that to migrate to see if my theory is true, let's see if there's a way we can protect against that. So what we really want is for the ad candidate function to have a require statement figure out a way to tell if the list contains that variable. I wonder if it's just as easy as the JavaScript code dot includes. So we're still deploying that to Linkedin. Hello, Hugo Holmes Quaytown. How are you? 